Welcome to Reread, where I'm rereading through the expanded universe in chronological order. Folks, we are on Jude Watson's Secrets of the Jedi, her next hardback novel. Basically, well, more than half. It's like 60-40, or a little bit more, like 62-38 to be exact. 62% uh, of it is the Obi-Wan Qui-Gon story, and the other part of it is the Obi-Wan Anakin story happening in the Clone Wars. So the first part of the story, first off, I remember when I first read this, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was a really good, solid book. Now reading it in chronological order, I'm noticing stuff I had forgotten. Because it had been so long since I'd read the series and I'd read several other things that had come out, I had remembered the main points of the plot from Jedi Apprentice and Jedi Quest. But reading it through, now I have, a, in chronological order, I have a very different opinion of this book. I don't think it's that good. Now hear me out. Part one is there's this kid called Tally, T-A-L-Y, and he is going to snitch on a League of Assassins or bounty hunters. And when, when, when he does this to the Senate, it's going to break up and arrest this secret you know, society of bounty hunters or whatnot. So, of course, they're going after the bounty hunters are going after the kid and Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan and Adi Gala and Siri are tasked to retrieve the boy bring him back to Coruscant so he can stand uh, he can stand on trial and testify against them. So it's one of those you know witness protection uh, jobs. As they do that, of course, things go wrong. They're bombarded by one particular, there's a lot of bounty hunters, but one is Magnus. He is the baddest of the bad of all these bounty hunters. And so it, they, the Padawans and the Masters split up. The Masters are trying to go after all the bounty hunters and kind of cut them off of the pass while Obi-Wan and Siri are trying to find transport off the planet. It'll happen in five days. There's one transport that comes on this planet and ships people away. So they have to wait out five, five days without getting caught. Well, during that time, Siri and Obi-Wan begin to have feelings for each other. And even though they are threatened, because I think it's Magnus who tracks them down and they barely escape, instead of going on the transport, they see that he's scoping out the transport. They say, well, how do we get on there without him knowing? Well, we'll just steal his ship. So they steal his ship. Unfortunately, his ship has a booby trap to where when they come out of hyperspace, they realize this later on, uh, the ship will explode when they come out of hyperspace. Not too long. So they have to figure out how to get rid of it. And they don't know because if they trip it, they could just explode in hyperspace. Well, of course, during moments of high stress, Tally, who is, I guess, real good. He's a mechanical genius. He's the one that sliced the code to get into the bounty hunter ship. So he's going to try to figure this out. But it's like a red wire, blue wire, <laughs> which one do I cut, uh, intensity going on. And that's when Siri and Obi-Wan express their true feelings for each other. Now, I do remember when this story came out, oh my goodness, the internet blew up. On StarWars.com in the forums, there was like, yay, I've always wanted Obi-Wan and Siri together. And it caused a massive inflow of terrible fan fiction of what if Obi-Wan and Siri had continued their forbidden love. Yikes. Uh, me, I remember being happy about it, but now reading this in chronological order, I had just forgotten that they really, uh, Jude Watson, in fact, should read, go back and read her own books because what happens is they, des they decide that they're going to go for it. They're going to live in secret, have a secret love for each other, but stay in the Jedi Order and not tell anyone. And at the end of the mission, oh, by the way, they, they get Tally to Coruscant, he talks to the Senate and you know exposes them. Uh, the rest of them get arrested. Unfortunately, the bounty hunters killed his parents. You know, just as like a vindictive maneuver. So his parents have died, and Tally is all alone. Which he he was questioning whether he should go do it or just escape with his family. Because if he never shows his face again, then sure the bounty hunters won't be brought to justice. But maybe they'll give up on him because he can just hide forever with his family. So was that the right decision to testify? Hmm. Well, that's going to come into the second half of the book. But before I get to that second half, uh, I want to go back to something. Qui-Gon realizes that Obi-Wan had a near-death experience with Siri. He figures that things were said. Love was exchanged. And Qui-Gon can read his Padawan. They had that good relationship. And I like that. And Obi-Wan says, yes, Master, but I know what you're going to tell me. Love is forbidden, blah, blah, blah. He's like, well... You know, you're not going to want to hear my thoughts. I, no, I don't, because I know what you're going to say, and I don't want to hear it. And somehow Yoda gets into the conversation, because they're in the room of a thousand fountains. And that's where Obi-Wan admits that he and Siri confess their love for each other. And Qui-Gon goes, well, you can't. Of course, Qui-Gon's giving the regular arguments. You know, attachment is forbidden. There's a reason for this. 
And Yoda is agreeing with him. So Obi-Wan hates it, but he knows it's the way. And he knows things, he asks Qui-Gon, will things ever change? When the Jedi Council would have to go away. Like the whole world would have to change and the Jedi be rebuilt again for it to change. Ah, hence, you know, what's going on in Luke's uh, Jedi Academy and, and, and going after that where love is okay. But Obi-Wan turns it, of course, on Qui-Gon and says, what about Tau? And of course, Yoda goes, hmm, yes, Qui-Gon, something you have to say. And well, then Qui-Gon has to fess up. He went, well, Obi-Wan, really? I mean, yeah, we did confess our love for each other, but thinking on it now, now that she's gone, um, we never would have fallen in love. We, we couldn't do that. We couldn't keep that secret. We couldn't leave the order. We'd be miserable with each other. So for the it was for the better, you know, I guess that she died. He doesn't say that. But he's like, but he said, I, I'm sure if she would have lived, we would not have been in love. Now, this goes against everything that Jude Watson set up in the books. Because it was a forbidden love, it was a passion, it was a passion. And of course, that call to vengeance novel, you know, and, and, and for books afterwards, Qui-Gon is having a hard time. He misses Tal. He wants to be with her. He's still, he, you know, the love, the flame is still there within him, even though she's gone now. And to cheapen that with a, yeah, now that I think about it, we never would have worked out. We weren't really in love. We are going to be just big, good friends and have pinky promises all the time. It really cheapens the art from Jedi Apprentice, and I hated it. I hated it. Plus, Obi-Wan and Siri have met in Jedi Quest before, and they've never mentioned it. But how Jude Watson explains this is they make a deal never to remember this moment again. So the other times they see each other, and Obi-Wan's thinking about past times when, oh, Siri, she always bothered me when we were Padawans, but now she's okay. We're being friends now. No, you would have brought that up. And you don't just forget one of the big moments of your life there. It was really bad, and I don't like it for that. Now, the second half is actually a little bit better here. That Flash Forward is the Clone Wars. Padme is in it. Very rarely do we have Padme in, in stories such as this, so we get to see her. Obi-Wan knows that he and uh, she and Anakin have something going on, but he doesn't think it's like love. He just thinks it's a nice kinship. Again... She was with him during one of the most pivotal moments of his life, and Obi-Wan is still feeling disconnected from his Padawan. You know, so they're keeping with that theme there that just something's not right. And Obi-Wan, he's jealous. He's, he, he finds himself a little jealous of the relationship Padme has with him, the comfort that they have to talk to each other. He feels like Anakin trusts Padme more because he knows Anakin goes off to talk to Padme. He doesn't know what talking means. But he just assumes that, you know, he, she, he is trusting Padme to keep his secrets. And Obi-Wan wants to be in that little circle of trust right now. So I thought that was nice. Uh, there's a scene with uh, Chancellor Palpatine, which is great too. You know, uh, and, and so him and, him and Anakin talking back and forth. That was a good, I think it was like half a chapter or whatnot. But the adventure's okay because they go back. Now Tally, I guess that's still his name. He didn't grow up to be just Tal. But Tally now runs a big security systems. They offer security and spyware, I guess, since that's who, that's who he's a whiz at that. And he just found the ultimate code breaker. It can break any code. As many times you change it, it'll break it again. And he doesn't care. He's neutral in the battle between you know the Separatists and the Republic. But he says, well, bring Obi-Wan, bring Siri, of course, because they were involved in the last adventure. He's like, and I don't know why he doesn't want... Well, no, he was with them the most. He was with the Padawans the most. And so he wants those two Padawans to come back. And because he owes the Jedi for saving his life a long time ago, he'll let them, he'll give them the offer first. And if they refuse the offer, he will sell it to the Separatists. So, of course, Obi-Wan and Siri have to go. Uh, Anakin's gone. Of course, Ferris at this point has left the Jedi Order, so he's not around. And so they go. And, of course, the whole time Obi-Wan was like looking at Siri like, do you remember this? Do you remember that? Oh, I remember the time. I, I, I can't believe I forgot it, actually. Yeah, trying to explain, you know, <laughs> everything, what's it called, retcon, everything from Jedi Quest when y'all work together. Now he starts seeing if she has those feelings, and she doesn't express anything. Well, then later on, Siri asks him about, this brings back feelings. Do you have any feelings like that? And he's thinking, hmm, Anakin, feelings with Anakin, yes. No, dummy, what you were just talking about in a chapter before, if Siri remembers it. And then he gives an answer, but for some reason, Siri frowns and walks away. What was that about? Idiot. Uh, no, one, no one thinks like that. And then later on, it just, I can't remember, but Tally says, remember the good times we had? She's like, yes. And then they look at each other. He goes, I've always loved you, Siri. You've, been, you've grown more beautiful, more wonderful. And she goes, oh, I know. But you know what? Qui-Gon and Eddie Gala were right. You know, it never would have worked. Yeah, it never would have worked out. What were you thinking? You know, friends? Friends, okay. So, so much for that love. 
from the first half, 62% of the novel, it's pointless now. We'll just be best friends. And then, of course, they kill her off. Yeah, I, I explained that in the last video, but they, uh, the last time I reviewed this. But they kill her off, and really, you know, Obi-Wan's, he's, he's sad about it, but Magnus, who is back, is the, he's kind of responsible because he was chasing them during uh, her death. Uh, he, Obi-Wan ignites his lightsaber, and he says, you are a bad person, but I am not. And, you, know, so, you, know, you are a murderer, but I am not. Zips his lightsaber up, arrest him. You know, oh, oh, good. I guess she didn't mean nothing to you. Because when Tal died, Qui-Gon wanted vengeance. And again, it just doesn't sync up. Of course, it's supposed to show you how Obi-Wan can take the high road, where Anakin will fall apart if anything were to happen to Padme. I don't know. It, it, it really, I, I'm shocked, but this is the, right now, unless there's another one I'm forgetting, the worst Jude Watson story. It just because... She trashes, trashes the beautiful storyline from Jedi Apprentice and then totally, I guess, ignores the events or Obi-Wan and Ciri's feelings in Jedi Quest, but then suddenly goes, you know what? I'm sitting on here on these forums and everyone wanted Obi-Wan and Ciri. Okay, I'll do it. No, no, you did in a terrible way, terrible way. So sadly, this one, not very good. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.